Well guys, this is really, really sad. And I found this. Oh man, this is the, the worst part about keeping fish. Well guys, this is really, really sad. I just came home. It's around three o'clock in the afternoon, came home from work, and I found this. He literally ate last night. I have no clue what's wrong with him or what happened to him, I should say. I am so sad. This is a huge, huge loss. I am so sad. Oh my goodness. This is terrible. I'm gonna get him out, see if I can see any visible injuries. Well, I'm sorry this is so graphic, but something was eating him, but that doesn't mean that that's how he died. I'll, uh, I don't wanna play with it too much. Let me get a better net. Well, I'm gonna bury him in the compost pile here. Uh, well, I wanted to get a quick measurement on him. <sighs> so we got tail here. I know he's covered in grass now because I was gonna measure him and then I mean I was gonna bury him and then I decided to measure him but so we got tip to tail he's over 30 inches let's see that the tail he's about 31 inches super sad he's absolutely huge see him next to my hand he's he's the thickness of my hand and he's like absolutely huge a huge loss I'm so sad I'm gonna bury him oh man this is the the worst part about keeping fish now well, some of you guys might be really confused by the timeline on this I actually lost the fire reel about three weeks ago I had the footage and I was like Ugh, I don't want to just throw it into one of the past couple weeks videos it just they had a flow to them I felt like that would kind of ruin the flow, so I decided uh, to wait on showing you guys that we lost the fire eel. Uh, we lost the fire eel before we took in any of those rescues or anything. It was just a random death. Was totally fine the, the night before, and uh, next day, dead. So, really sad. I didn't see any visible reason other than he was getting eaten on, but again, that probably happened after he died. It's very unlikely that something was like eating him to death, so... Uh, really, really sad. Still not over it, and it's been three weeks, but at least I could make the video uh, so you guys can have an update on that. Also, I did have to get into the 1500 gallon. It's actually the first time I've ever got in it. I did not want to get in it. I've been trying to avoid it, but uh, I am having epoxy problems, and I wanted to put some rocks and do a little bit of cleanup from some of the epoxy that is peeling, uh, especially off the glass, very similar to what's happening with the 1100, except uh, it's actually kind of worse on this one because I don't like this epoxy. <laughs> the, uh, the epoxy for this one is just not as good as what I used for the 1100. I did have to get in, do some cleanup, move some rocks around. I was a little nerve wracking around the rays. I did my best to avoid them and kind of push them out of the way. But yeah, they were very curious. The rays kind of wouldn't leave me alone the whole time. So that I had to worry about that. Um, I do have to put more rocks in. I'll have to do this again. I just got to get more rocks. Um, some of the smaller rocks, they have already moved out from where I put them. I had a feeling that would happen. I just hoped that they wouldn't be able to do it, but they're big fish. So basically I need like big boulders to put inside the 1500 in strategic areas that help keep the rays away from chewing on the epoxy because yeah rays are chewers you know they they shed their teeth and they try to grind their teeth down they're just those they are chewers that's what they do so um i didn't anticipate it to be quite as bad as it is now i know so i'm gonna do everything i can to try to protect the tank before it's too late I actually had a bunch of other stuff um change over the past couple weeks uh, I want to catch you guys up on as much as I can in this video so we can kind of be like on a fresh start for next week. So I sold off two of my rays, um, kind of my bigger pups. It was my pair of Leo hybrids, my female and male. Uh, they were getting some size on them too, but I, uh, 
I had kind of a good offer on them, so I decided to go with it. So I have two less rays now. I think I'm down to 10. Uh, this tank was a little bit, wasn't overcrowded for their size, but I, I foresaw in about a year it would be. Um, and again, I just got a good offer on them. So if I, I can get rays pretty easily at this point, if I want to try to grow out some nice uh, hybrids again, I can always grab some more. But yeah, so I rehomed them. This tank is, has a little bit more space in it, but again, they weren't huge, so it's not like they took up a lot of space. Also, I set up the other 40 breeder that I've been talking about for a few months. Um, it is a little sketchy putting a tank like this with, uh, without a full bracing around the bottom, but these are small tanks. In my experience, I don't have much to worry about. Plus, we're not even really filling them because of the way the bulkhead situation is gonna work out. So anyway, um, seems to work fine I drilled another hole in this one I got this 40 gallon breeder for 25 bucks so it's not really risky and there's no tag on it that says it's tempered so I was pretty sure that I could drill it um, it's the exact same tank as that anyway so I knew that I could drill this one as well so I'm gonna uh, I want to do a similar background situation but I think I'm just gonna do this back panel rather than like a whole side panel because then you lose viewing from both sides if I was to do the whole thing. So I'm just gonna do the back panel. So it still has kind of a background and kind of still matches. It also will eliminate you seeing this plumbing from the inside. So we're gonna be looking at it that way. You're gonna kind of not see plumbing hanging down and then a return coming in. Something I did a little different on this was the return. So on this tank, I actually teed into one of the pump's main lines and added a return off that. So this is being fed by the same pump that feeds this. And I have another pump on this side that also feeds this and the 600, but I didn't want to tee into that because I really don't want to take any feed away from the 600. So what I did here was I added a small half inch line, actually I think it's even smaller than half inch. and just a soft line that's on a siphon here. So when I lose power, I'll probably lose siphon at some point, but not a big deal. I can always just start that siphon back up again easy enough. And this avoids me having another pump running also, so I'm happy. So we're filling it up that way, which I'm sure is gonna be pretty slow. Although it's only been going for about a minute and we already uh, almost covered, so. I didn't show you guys much of this setup. I don't want to bore you guys with it, but I used the black gravel that I've had left over for a while, and I put a piece of background up like I wanted with a magnet, a rock, and I've got my sponge filter there. So now we uh, wait for it to fill so we can add fish. You guys saw the process of me setting this one up a while ago, and I also added sand, a background, to try to make it look a little nicer. And uh, we moved over the albino silver arowanas to both of these along with my tinfoil barbs to grow out. I turned off the light on the 1100 because it was giving us bad reflection, but it's kind of a cool little setup, really simple. I'm not trying to like go crazy scaping it. Um, stuff's gonna move stuff around, I already know that, but it was uh, to try to make the Dorado feel more comfortable, make it look a little bit more natural, just really simple, something I did in about a half hour, just to make it look a little better. And we did something really similar on this side with the other silver albino arowana, but I went with black, I had the gravel, and um, I did set up this uh, piece of background, which I already have to fix, I noticed it bubbled a little bit. I didn't uh, put a ton of time into this, obviously, but I can fix that and make it look a little better. But we got dual albino silver arowanas, which I think is pretty cool. I thank you guys, as always, for watching the videos. I know this one was a little bit sad, and uh, it, was sad, it was really sad for me. So that was a tough video for me to make, but I still hope that you guys enjoyed the rest of the video. I ask you to please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring that notification bell for notifications. If you like the video, like the video. Follow me on Instagram at Off the Deep End Aquatics, and I will see you guys in that next one. Thanks.